Okay, good morning, everyone, and um, welcome to the course on the Kingdom of God and Kingdom Builders. Just so excited to have uh, all of our in-person students um, back again. We actually missed all of you. Um, uh, even when we were having the short-term Bible college here, it's kind of missed all your faces and your, um, you know, just your presence here. But good to have you uh, back, and hope all of you had a good. A holiday. Also, welcome to all our online students and our e-learning uh, students. Just so glad that all of you can join us from uh, different parts of our uh, nation and also from the nations of the world. Uh, in this course, we will be studying two APC publications. Uh, the first one is the Kingdom of God and the other is um, Kingdom uh, Builders. So we will first start studying the Kingdom of God, and I posted the PDF on the stream page. And um, in the for the e-learners, it's in the course content. The PDF copy is there available, so you can make use of it even as you're listening to the video or you are joining online. Of course, our in-person students have the uh, you know the uh, the copy of this uh, book with them. So even as we delve in this uh, course on um, the Kingdom of God and Kingdom Builders, uh, it's my prayer that each one of us will be equipped uh, to fulfill the Kingdom mandate. What is a Kingdom mandate? What do you think is a Kingdom mandate? The Lord's Prayer? It's in the Lord's Prayer. Thy Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven okay so our aim is to see all of in all of you his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven uh, right where you are that god would use you uh, mightily so even as we are this learning community you know i encourage all of you to actively engage in uh, discussions uh, please ask questions um, you know, and challenge your understanding uh, because it is through these uh, interactions that we have that we truly grow and gain and, uh, you know, receive deeper insights into God's kingdom uh, principles. And I just don't, uh, uh, you know, want to come here and teach, but also learn from you. So please uh, feel free to uh, discuss, ask questions and um, share your thoughts, share your ideas. Uh, so that I can also learn from you, okay? Uh, uh, we'll have four assessments in this course, two for each book. So this book has about um, 11 chapters. So maybe we'll do the first five or first six for the first assessment and the rest of the uh, five or four for the uh, second assessment. And then when we begin doing... Um, Kingdom Builders, we'll have again two assessments, uh, which we'll divide between half of the, you know, of the chapters that are um, there, okay? Any questions anyone has? For today, um, you know, the online students, if you like to have any, uh, ask any questions, I'd like you to please uh, post it on the chat section, uh, because... Um, Okay, so you can speak. Uh, maybe I can just hear it from my speaker. So that's okay. We've removed this uh, connection that we have with the the audio connection here um, connected to the you know speakers. So you can go ahead and feel free to ask any questions. Okay. Uh, before we begin, we'll just pause for a word of prayer. Uh, can one of you take the mic, please, and lead us in a word of prayer? The bike is here, Sri Radha, so, yeah, yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne and we pray for today's class. And uh, as we are coming here to learn your word, give us wisdom, knowledge, so that we can learn. And um, when we will go, uh, when we will go in this world, that uh, we may build your kingdom, God. We surrender our soul, our our heart, our mind, everything in your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So the kingdom of God is a major theme uh, throughout the Bible. Uh, when Jesus began his 
earthly ministry, he began by proclaiming the arrival of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so how did Jesus begin his earthly ministry? Let me just admit these students. Okay. Yeah. So when Jesus began his earthly ministry, um, you know, um, he began by proclaiming that the kingdom of God has arrived or the kingdom of heaven has uh, arrived. And during his final days, just before his ascension, he also thought about the kingdom of God. And we see that after Jesus ascended or went back to the Father in heaven, uh, you know, we see that the early church also thought and preached from a kingdom perspective. So we see that the kingdom of God is such a major theme or a major topic in the New Testament. Okay. And the kingdom of God is, uh, the word kingdom of God is mentioned in the New Testament at least 150 times. Okay. Just as many times as we talk about who we are in Christ. That means just as many times we talk about our identity in uh, Christ. So the kingdom of God is very important uh, for us to understand, know, and work out and live in our very uh, everyday life. Okay. So it is very important for us to understand the kingdom of God, understand the principles, understand this whole concept or dimension of the kingdom of God, uh, so that, you know, we can know, work out, and live our everyday lives from this perspective that we belong to the kingdom of God, okay? Now, even before we look at uh, chapter 1, we need to understand that the where is the kingdom of God? Yes, the kingdom of God is within us, okay? It is within us. And we need to recognize that we, each one of us, are sons and daughters of the kingdom. Uh, we are sown, sown as good seeds into this world. I'll explain what is the meaning of sown as good seeds into this world. Uh, and in the study, you know, we'll, uh, it will teach us how to live and operate out of a kingdom perspective. So even as we go through this entire APC publication, this book, it will help us to, you know, understand how we need to live and operate out of a kingdom of God a perspective where everything we do is an extension of the king's domain here on earth, which means everything that we do, we are actually releasing the rule and the reign and the presence of God in and through our um, lives, okay? And we will also learn how to fulfill the kingdom mandate in our life. And the kingdom mandate is to see his kingdom come and his will be done uh, right, you know, through us, right where we are, wherever we are, you know, to see his kingdom come and his will be done uh, through us. So even as we talk about the kingdom of God, you know, we are basically talking about the king of this kingdom. And we're also talking ob about the domain of the king. So two important things we'll be talking about is the king of this kingdom, who is the king of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And we'll also be talking about the domain of this king. Okay. The word kingdom in the New Testament, uh, it comes from the Greek word basilia, uh, which means royalty, rule, reign, a realm of the kingdom. So kingdom, therefore, refers to the realm of the or realm of king's rule, reign, or the king's domain. Okay, So it refers to the domain of the king, his rule, his government and the reign of the king. So basically, when we're talking about the kingdom of God, we are referring to the realm or the, you know, the whole kingdom or the, the, the part or the realm of his influence and the authority of his government. Okay. Now, in the New Testament, you will find two phrases 
the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Okay, we'll find two phrases, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Now, what do you understand by these two phrases, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? Can we have some answers? When you think about the kingdom of God, when Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God in various parables, when he introduced the ministry, you know, he was talking about the kingdom. What comes to your mind when you think about the kingdom of God or what comes to your mind when you think about the kingdom of heaven? You can need to take the mic. Online students, can we have some answers? What do you understand by these two terms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of God, what I think is like where God, um, it talks about that it's God who reigns there, he rules. And kingdom of heaven is like where where he rules. Where, where he it rules, is. where it is. The kingdom yeah. of God, heaven is where it is. Okay. What else comes to your mind when you think about kingdom of God? A place that is so perfect and beautiful where the Lord God Almighty is the king. Okay, nice. What else? Jesus said the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like. Okay. Uh, so what comes to your mind? Just think. What comes to your mind when you think about kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven? Mike. Uh, the parable that Jesus tells, like the kingdom of God, is like a wise man who builds his house on the stone that cannot be shaken, that cannot be destroyed. Okay, so basically, when you think about for Prince, when he thinks about the kingdom of God, he's thinking about the parables that Jesus taught to explain how the kingdom of God functions, or the principles, or how it works. Okay. Anything else comes to your mind when you think about kingdom of God? Online students, anyone would like to share? <laughs> Pass that mic quickly. <laughs> I was to think of uh, where Jesus tells to Peter that I'll build upon this rock, like okay. like a church. The church is built on the rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay. Is the terms kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven different, or do they mean the same thing? They're different. Okay. What is the difference? Okay, before we go there, Jackin says the kingdom of God is God's authority and power being released through us uh, on the earth. Good, yes. Kingdom of God is basically God's authority, his power, his rule, his presence, uh, you know, being released in and through us here on this earth. Thank you, Jackin. That's good. Okay, anyone else? Is it on? Yeah. Kingdom of God is uh, within our heart, actually. It has to. Oh, yeah. It's, it's it, within. Is, it is within it, us, uh -huh. and from through uh -huh. us, it is manifested yeah. or made known or expressed to others. in the world. Okay. To others. Very good. Thank you. Yes, Sean. Can pass the mic to Sean. Just check if the mic is on, please. Okay. So you're talking about the difference between the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven? Within us. It's released to the earth. Okay, to others. Okay, it only exists in heaven. Okay, good thought. Thank you for sharing. 
anyone else uh, tells can tell me how many of you think that kingdom of god and kingdom of heaven mean the same thing it's different everyone thinks it's different rin is not too sure I think it's same. okay prince thinks it's the same sean Okay, smart. <laughs> Sean thinks it's the same. Okay, Prabhu says, God as a king where his will is done. Okay, he means that uh, when you think about kingdom of God, Prabhu thinks that God is the king. And uh, in his kingdom, his will is done. Yes, he exercises his will, his sovereign rule, his sovereign reign, his sovereign authority. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. God is the only king, even if it's kingdom of God, even if kingdom of God, so I think it's the same, but the tongue that he used is different. Okay, it's the same because kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven, the king is the same, doesn't change. So smart, <laughs> logical understanding and reasoning, yes, it's the same, okay. Uh, but when you talk about God, you're talking about God the Father, but in talking about Jesus, you call them as the Lord, right? No, but even in that, Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God. There's no differentiation. Even if you call him Lord, in the Old Testament, Lord is Yahweh, right? Adonai, Lord. But So you don't, they don't use the word Yahweh because it was very precious for them to use. So they used the word Lord, uh, Adonai. So uh, it refers to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There is no distinction. Okay. Now, we got, because in the New Testament, that's what it says. The title, the uh, Lord is what you call Jesus, and God is what refers to the Father. But in the Old Testament, it yeah, because Jesus said, was man, right? Yes. He, 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 God became man. Yes. The Son of Man is referred to as. But uh, he, who, who is Jesus? He is God. God incarnate, who came on the earth. Yes. Okay, so actually the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are same terms, similar terms, you know. Uh, sometimes uh, you know, we unnecessarily trouble ourselves in trying to find or draw distinctions uh, between uh, these two words, uh, you know, but there really there is no distinction that is very evident in the word of um, God. So, you know, these two Terms, kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven are synonymous. You know, they mean the same thing. Uh, the kingdom of God basically refers to whose kingdom it is. Like Rin said, it is, you know, God's kingdom. And, you know, Prabhu saying God is the king of this uh, kingdom. And, um, you know, uh, and like Jackin said, you know, it's his authority, his power is being released and and through us so basically the kingdom of god uh, uh, you know is referring to whose kingdom it is so whose kingdom it is it's god's kingdom and that is why it's called as kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven is basically referring to what where the kingdom is from the origin where does this kingdom come from okay where does it come from heaven and it's not from earth okay so it, that's why it is called kingdom of heaven and hence they both refer to the same uh, thing it refers to the rule the reign the influence uh, the government of god in the hearts and lives of people so it is god's kingdom that is in us it's birthed in and through us it is made manifest in and through us and this kingdom is not from the earth this kingdom is from heaven okay so that's the way we are going to treat these two terms the kingdom of god and kingdom of heaven uh, because they're synonymous we will be using it interchangeably so don't uh, you know get confused they mean one and the same uh, thing okay now let's begin by looking at a very interesting verse that is in the bible uh, let's go to matthew chapter 25 and look at verse 34 matthew chapter 25 verse 34 so can one of you please read 
uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. And for those of you uh, who are, um, you know, following in your books, it is there on in the first page of um, lesson one. Can you read, please? Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Then the king says, will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Okay. Thank you. So here, you know, um, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, Jesus is basically giving us a picture of the end of days. And he's talking about what here? He's talking about? What is he talking about here? Okay. Basically, if you look, uh, the, the verses prior, he's basically talking about the sheep and the goats. Okay, prior to verses 34, you know, he's uh, Jesus is giving us a picture of the end of days and he's talking about the sheep and about the goats and how at the end of the age the sheep and the goats will be separated. Okay, and here's what will happen, uh, as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, he says, he will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom that is prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Okay, now this is a very powerful verse. There's a lot uh, in this verse. So Jesus is basically saying, I want you to come and inherit what? Inherit the kingdom. And when was this kingdom prepared? Before the foundations of the world. Okay. Now, in the New Testament, this phrase, the foundation of the world, is found 10 times in the New Testament. And one of these 10 times is found here in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. We also know that the Lamb of God was. Yes, but what do we, how do we connect the Lamb of God before the foundation of the world? He was slain before the foundation of the world, okay? So, but now here we are talking about the kingdom of God that was prepared even before the foundation of the world. And what it simply means is um, this, you know, that this was in the heart, the kingdom of God was in the heart, in the mind, in the plan and the purpose of God, even before creation began. Amen. Right. Okay. So it was not just that the Lamb of God was slain even before the foundation of the world, but God had purpose in his heart, in his mind. He had planned that even before the foundation of the world, he had this in mind that he would have a kingdom. Okay. So the kingdom of God is not something that God had planned in retrospect but it is a kingdom that was something that he had always in his heart. It was in the intent of his heart even before creation, even before he created everything, and even before the foundation of the world. Okay, So this means, or it means that to us, that one of the purposes of creation ties back to the intent or the desire of the heart of God. And what is that desire or the intent or the purpose that God had? To create the world? What was God's intent, plan, purpose? One of God's intent, plan, purpose for creation? To have a? Okay, that's there. But in this context, when we're studying... To have a kingdom, because that is what Matthew chapter 25, verse 34 says. Okay, uh, it says, you know, inherit the kingdom prepared for you before the foundation of the world. So, the kingdom of God, what I said was, it's not something that God had thought after He created the world. Okay, it was not something that came into His mind after Adam and Eve 
were created. It did not come into his mind or it was not his purpose or plan after he saw Abraham or after he made his covenant with Abraham. It was not even that uh, is a plan or a purpose or an intent that came into his heart and mind after he saw David, you know, and he said, uh, oh, you know, David is a king. Uh, so maybe I should think of having a kingdom. No, the plan of God having a kingdom was even before the foundation of the world, even before creation. So one of the purposes of creation or one of the reasons why God even created the world is, you know, to have a kingdom. Of course, the other things are also there, you know, wanted us to have uh, create a man in his image that we can have fellowship with him. But another reason why God created the whole world is or created the whole of creation is so that he can have a kingdom. So you see how important the kingdom of God is in the heart and the mind of God. Okay, so sometimes we can overlook or undermine or underestimate the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, thinking that it's only what Jesus thought, it's only in his parables, but actually how important this whole topic of kingdom of God is. So some of you might be thinking, hey, why this topic, you know, kingdom of God, kingdom builders, I don't think it's important. So some of you on the online, you know, might, might be thinking this is not an important course. So, you know, maybe I, I'll just log in and not listen to the lectures. But we see how important yeah, this is because the word of God says that even before the foundation of the world, it was in the intent and the heart of God to have a, a kingdom. Okay. So um, it was something he wanted to have even before uh, creation. It was the intent of God to have a kingdom prepared for whom? For himself? For us, for you and me. So the kingdom of God or the kingdom that God had intended or purpose to create was something that he prepared for us. Okay, Meaning that he wanted to have a kingdom of people. Okay, not just the kingdom of heavenly beings, of angels, but he wanted to have a kingdom of people, a kingdom of you and uh, me. Okay, so what kind of people was God looking for? What do you think? What kind of people that uh, God was planning to have in his kingdom? Who believe in Jesus, okay? Who believe in Jesus? Let's make sure the mic is on. Uh, who believe? Uh, who believe in Jesus and uh, love him, love the Father as the King of Kings. Okay, love the Father as a King of Kings. Okay, what kind of people? Good sons and daughters. He's looking for sons and daughters. Very good. What kind of people is he looking for in his kingdom? Often when we think about a kingdom, okay, let me just admit Anthony. Okay, often when we think about the kingdom, we think of what? Hierarchy, yes. We think of whom? A king. And uh, who are the people? What are they called? Subjects, yes. They're called as subjects. Some of them even? Slaves and servants of the king okay so when we think of a kingdom we think of a king and we think of people as subjects of slaves and of uh, servants but the wonderful thing and the amazing thing is when god thought about kingdom he did not think about he created this kingdom for us we are part of this kingdom but when he thought about us he did not think about us as servants subjects or slaves but just like um, uh, nina said he thought about us as his sons and his daughters isn't that amazing right okay so he he said what does he say in this verse he says um uh, you know inherit the kingdom prepared for you look at matthew chapter 25 verse 34 it says inherit the kingdom prepared for you. you. So who inherits a kingdom? Sons and 
daughters, not slaves. You inherit your father's inheritance. You inherit your parents' inheritance or your forefathers' inheritance or property. It's not the slave or the uh, maid or uh, the watchman or if you have a driver, it's not they will inherit, but it's the sons and um, daughters. And that is why he says, I want you to inherit the kingdom. So inherit means what? Becoming heirs of the kingdom. Okay. So God's intent or the plan of his heart was to have a kingdom of people where these people would not be slaves or subjects, but they would be heirs of the kingdom. And that was in his heart even before creation or even before the world was uh, created or even before the world began. So the kingdom of God is part of God's original intent, God's original purpose in, in all of creation. And God wanted to have a kingdom of uh, heirs of people who will be, you know, kings with him in that kingdom and not a kingdom where we'll be subjects and slaves, but a kingdom of heirs, people who will be heirs with God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ, right? Can you just imagine the kind of love that God, the great, amazing love that God has for us? The word of God says that his thoughts towards us are so great, are so precious, are so priceless, and this is what his thought is about us. His thought is that we are hairs with God. Can you imagine that? I mean, even when you listen to that, my hair stands up, you know, on my hands. It just, just blows my mind to think that God thinks of me as his hair. You know, when I don't even, when I can't even look at him, he lives in unapproachable light who no man has seen or can ever see. But he looks at me as his hair. He looks at each one of you as his hair. And he and we are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Can you imagine which means? What does it mean that we are co-heirs with Jesus Christ? We own everything. What Jesus has done, we can also do. Actually, it talks about that we are on the same level as Jesus. We're equal as Jesus. Can you imagine that? I mean, it, it, you can't even just think how much God thinks about us, how much, what level he has brought us to. You know, he looks at us and he loves us just the way he loves his son. And I think at the beginning of this course, I want you to hold on to this identity. Even as you are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God, you know, we believe so much in the lies of the enemy. We are living such, you know, sometimes we live like a serve, serve. we have the servant mentality. We don't have the son mentality. We have the slave mentality. You know, we think that we are so low. We are so uh, down. We are, we are nobody. Sometimes we think we're so hopeless and useless. But if you look at what God thinks of us, you know, he thinks of us as hairs with him, co-hairs with Jesus Christ. And that, you know, uh, that he has given us this kingdom and, uh, you know, we are part of this kingdom. And even as we look at it, I just want you to sense this whole, uh, you know, privilege that you have and also the sense of responsibility that you would need to work out and function in this uh, kingdom. Okay, so keep telling yourself, hey, you know, I'm a hair of God and I'm co-hair with Jesus Christ, okay? Every time the devil reminds you of your past, what you can't do, your fallenness, your sinfulness, remind yourself of who you are in the kingdom of God. What has been entrusted to you as, you know, sons and daughters of the kingdom of um, God. So now when we go back to the book of um, Genesis, okay, let's look at Genesis chapter 1. Uh, verses 27 and 28. So we're looking at this with a whole new perspective. And what is this whole new perspective? God created kingdom for us. God created the earth. One of his purposes, one of his intent was to bring about his kingdom. kingdom. Okay. So we will look at uh, this with this whole new idea with this whole new intent that God had in his heart. So look at what, um, look at God's creation and you would need to see it in the light of what he originally intended to 
do? What did he originally intend to do? One of the intents of his heart was to prepare a kingdom of people who will be heirs of that kingdom. Okay, And now we see that even as this was the intent of God's heart, he begins to execute that intent or he he begins to bring about what his plans and the intents of his heart is so in chapter one of genesis we see that god introduces the kingdom okay did you ever look at it with this perspective no okay so let's look at it with this perspective okay uh, genesis chapter one verses 27 and 28 so one of you can you read this please Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 to uh, 28. So God created human beings, making them to be like himself. He created them male and female, blessed them, and said, Have many children, so that your descendants will live all over the earth and bring it under their control. I am putting you in charge of the fish and the birds and all the wild animals. I have provided all kinds of grain and all kinds of fruit for, uh, for you to eat. But for all the wild animals and for all and for all the birds, I have provided grass and leafy plants for food, and it was done. God looked at everything He had made, and He was very pleased. Evening passed, and morning came. That no, was just so twenty-seven okay. and twenty-eight, please, oh, sorry, Sean. Thank I you. Done. Yeah. So here we see that God created man in His own image. The image of God, He created them, male and female and so he's talking to them okay meaning he's talking to both men and women so it's not just for men but also men and women and he blesses them and what does how does he bless them he says a uh, brief fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth okay so here we see the kingdom being introduced right here in genesis chapter one how do we see that the kingdom is being introduced we see it as when 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 god says have dominion well, dominion means what authority rule reign okay bringing about the kingdom the the kingdom reign the kingdom government the kingdom presence the kingdom rule so it says have dominion over the fish of the sea the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth so god blesses man and woman and he says he wants them to subdue that means i want you to have dominion i want you to exercise rule reign authority government power okay so god introduces his kingdom right here in genesis chapter 1 verse um, 26 27 and 28 so he wanted to have a kingdom of people who would be heirs with him in ruling in managing in executing the government of the kingdom and he begins to unfold his plans or the intents of his heart even as he has created the world even as he's created man and woman okay so um you know when god created man and woman and he says i want you to subdue or i want you to have dominion you know he's saying this is your realm okay this is your uh your your uh, your uh, uh, dimension of where you can have authority you are going to be part of this kingdom uh, which i'm preparing for a people who will be heirs with me amen no i think this is very very powerful uh, that the kingdom of god is not something that came suddenly uh, up in the mind of god in the new testament but this kingdom of god was in the very heart and the plan of god from the very beginning it was part of his original purpose and intent for you and me and now that this has happened uh, you know he has uh, created the world he has uh, brought about uh, men and women he has given us the power and the dominion he has introduced his kingdom but what happens adam and eve fell because of the fall okay so the whole kingdom plan was interrupted what do you think god was disappointed or he, did he think, oh, oh, I didn't anticipate this. I didn't think that this would happen. 
Do you think he anticipated it? Do you think he, he knew what was going to happen? Yes, right? But interestingly, the Bible also says that Jesus was the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world, which means that the plan of redemption was already in place or already a completed, done thing in the heart and mind of God even before the creation of the world world isn't that amazing so god had this plan to, or the intent of his heart to have this kingdom but right here in the beginning we see that adam and eve fell but even in spite of that god's plan of redemption was also a done completed thing in his heart and mind even before the foundation of the world so this is another amazing thing that we uh, read we come to know about God's plan and intent and about the kingdom of um, God. So when Adam and Eve fell, God knew that this was coming and he also knew that the plan of redemption was already in place and at the Kairos moment that will also come into uh, fulfillment. Okay, But I want you to see uh, this. The plan of redemption is not just to save you and me from sin, Okay, it's not just for God to rescue you and me from Satan's grip or Satan's power or Satan's authority, but the plan of redemption is to bring us back to that place of experiencing God's original intent, his purpose of the kingdom that he had prepared for people who will be heirs with him. Okay, so redemption was not just, hey, to redeem us from sin. Yes, that was one of the major plans of redemption. Okay, to redeem us from the sin, the power of sin, from being uh, slaves of Satan, to being under Satan, to being under his rule, his, his domain actually being under his rule, his authority. It is his, the plan of redemption also had another intent. It was God intending to bring us back to our original position or the original place that he intended for us. And what is that? It is to bring us back to a place where we will have dominion and authority that we will be heirs of God. Okay. Now, there are many things that happened after the fall. Okay, uh, but in this in this in in this context, you know, I want to bring our attention to uh, just two things. Okay, there are many things that happened um, when Adam and Eve sinned, but in our context that we are studying about the kingdom of God, I want to bring two things to your attention. When Adam and Eve sinned and the fall took place, what happened in this context when we're seeing what happened? Uh, just give him the mic, yeah. The kingdom that was like the dominion uh, that was given to uh, man was uh, passed on to uh, Satan. Excellent, yes. So, you know, who, who did God give dominion and authority to? Man, man and woman. Okay, he said, have dominion, subdue over everything. Okay, so like, yeah, Jackin says, we lost our original authority or dominion. Thank you, Jackin. So here we see that, you know, when Adam and Eve sinned, you know, they gave over this dominion, this authority to the devil. And the devil or Satan gained control or he had temporary control over the earth. Okay. And secondly, um, yes, Sean. Uh Yeah, even if you see in the beginning, Earth was actually for uh, for uh, for uh, Satan or Lucifer at first. Before then, it was uh, given to uh, I mean, given to us. We had. Sorry, to can you say that again, please? When it uh, at first, if you see Earth itself was uh, when it was desolate and it was dark, and that was actually for um, uh, God had intended for Satan to uh, to be in charge of that. But no, then, we don't see this anywhere in Scripture. We don't have this anywhere in scripture. Yes, we know the darkness covered the world, but because God had not created anything, 
uh, but yeah, Satan was a fallen angel. He was thrown out of heaven, but it doesn't say that he was here on the earth. Okay. Yeah. So I'll uh, get back to you on that then. Okay. Okay, so uh, we see that the secondly, uh, you know, the the man's concept of being a king. Okay, we are heirs of God. So we are actually kings of being heirs of God was marred. Okay, means it was, uh, it was, um, uh, what do you say for marred? It was like shaken or it was uh, distorted or it was, you know, it was, it lost its original purpose and uh, intent. Instead, we became slaves. We become, we become subjects of our enemy. Uh, and therefore, we have developed this mindset of slavery and a mindset of being subjects or being under slavery or being under authority. And that is why when we go into, uh, you know, when we are born again, sometimes we have the same mindset or mentality. And that is why the word of God says we need to renew our minds daily because this is one of the areas. Okay. We'll stop here and we'll come back after the break and continue.